Hi there, and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Rick, and in today's video, we're going to be installing a power back alarm in my house panel. And I'm also going to be going over my generator setup. Many of you might not be aware of what that is, but that's an alarm that lets you know that the power has been restored from the power company. So here in Florida, where we have a lot of uh, hurricanes, a lot of storms, our power gets knocked out a lot. So a lot of times, you know, we have to run on generator power, and when we do, uh, while we're on generator power, we're, we don't know when the electric is restored, and that's what this backup alarm enables us to do. So let's get it installed. Alright, so while we, while we still have the uh, power cut off, disconnected from the house, so the house is not energized at all, um, I'm going to install this Reliance Power Back Alarm. Living in Florida, um, hurricanes are, are a normal occurrence, so everybody here pretty much has generators, which is great. The only fallback to that is when you're running off a of generator power, you don't know when the electrical service has been restored. So you might be running on your generator for a day or two before you realize that the power has been restored. So I went out and bought this Reliance Power Back Alarm. And um, so what it does is it's going to mount, it's got a magnetic back to it, and it's going to mount here on the inside of the panel. And then it just has two wires, a ground, a green that's going to go to the ground, the ground bar, and then this black one which has this white pigtail. The pigtail just loops around your life that's coming into the breaker. This is for coming from the meter to the main house breaker. Now you can put it on either hot leg, it doesn't matter. You just have to put it on one because what this will do is it will sense when electrical current flows through. So once the power company turns the power back onto the house, this, this line here will become energized, even though the breaker is going to be off. But this will pick it up and the alarm will sound and let us know that the power has been restored. And then we can go outside, shut off the generator power, and then uh, turn everything back on to uh, the power company power. So let's go ahead and get this installed. So this just goes on the live. And again, this whole panel has been disconnected at the meter. So we're just going to run it in a pigtail fashion. Now I've got the pigtail wrapped around one of the uh, the live or uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, main lines uh, coming in. Um, so uh, right now it's dead; it's not live. But uh, when it is re-energized, uh, this should sense it and set the alarm in our alarm. So now we're just going to hook this up to our ground bar. And now we're going to attach the ground to our ground bar. So 
So now we have the uh, Reliant power, power Backup Alarm installed. We have the uh, white cord uh, cold around our uh, incoming live uh, hot leg. And then we've got our ground. And then uh, it also requires a 9-volt battery. And then once, you, uh, once your power goes down um, and you turn your generator on, then you simply come, you take the panel off and then turn it to the on position and it will say system armed. Um, so now it's monitoring whether or not uh, there's energy or power running in this conductor. So I'm going to shut it off right now and go ahead and mount it on the inside of the panel. And the installation of that is complete. Okay, so we're, we're really simulating a power outage right now with the meter off the house. The house isn't energized. Um, so this would be sort of like a storm situation where the power's you know out. It might be out for a couple of days, might be out for a week. So what, what I do is I've got a, a sub panel in our shed which houses our generator. So I'm going to go over there and uh, plug in the generator, open up the breaker that's in the uh, sub panel at the shed, and then that will back feed uh, generator power to our house panel and allow us to have electricity here in the house. Okay, so now we're out in my shed, so let's start here in the shed. Um, I have a, a Troy built uh, 5550 watt generator, so there's 5550 watts and the starting watts I believe are 8,550. Um, it's just a, a standard uh, gas generator. Um, that way gas is readily available uh, in the event of emergency. Uh, you, you can also stockpile the gas so you've got it uh, when a storm comes. Um, living here in Florida, uh, probably 50 percent of the residents here in Florida have generators uh, just because of the uh, power outages during storms. You could be without power from a week uh, to two weeks. So um, from there I have my generator outlet. This is a uh, Reliance, uh, I believe a 30 amp outlet. It's a male outlet which is why it has the cover on it like it does and then I've got a female outlet on the end of my generator cord and this female outlet just inserts into the uh, Reliance 30 amp outlet and then I believe it just uh, it has a twisting mechanism so once you install it you just twist it to the right and then that locks it in place. Here's a closer look of the inside of the outlet. Uh, you can see it's rated for 125, 250 volts, 30 amps. And then there's a number 10 gauge Romex that runs out of the outlet up and into the top of the, uh, the shed sub panel to a 30 amp breaker in that panel. The other end of the cord has a male uh, connection and that male connection, which you can see right here, um, plugs into the front of the generator. Uh, the generator has just a couple of uh, 110 receptacles, but then it has the uh, 120, 240 volt, 30 amp connection here. And similar to the, uh, the female plug, uh, once you plug it in, I believe you twist it to the right, and then that locks it in place so it can't come out. And then you're pretty much done with your generator setup. Here at the sub panel, I have a two pole 30 amp breaker, um, which is tied to the generator outlet. I believe you can see it there on the left side of the, uh, the panel. I've got it labeled, I believe it's breaker 5 A and B, generator outlet, breaker off, unless generator on. So the majority of the time, uh, you know, the breaker remains in the off position. Uh, the only time that, uh, you know, it's in the on position, is once I uh, crank up the generator. So again, once I crank up the generator, I turn this to the on position and that will energize power from the sub panel back to my house panel. All right, so now with the generator running, um, I have power to this breaker right here, which is the breaker that feeds the shed. As soon as I turn this breaker on, it will energize our house panel. But before you do that, you always want to make sure that your main breaker is always 
in the off position because if it's not, if it's in the open position and you're back feeding electricity from your generator, then the electricity could go out of the house panel up the line and potentially electrocute one of the linemen or the uh, electricians from the power company. So for liability purposes, you always want to make sure that your main breaker is off so you're only feeding power to your panel. You're not feeding any power up the, up the pole or up the line. Um, so once I make sure that this breaker is off, at this point I can turn my breaker on from the uh, shed and then that will energize this panel. Now, I always, before I energize it, make sure all the breakers in the off position. And then you'll see the breakers that have red dots on them. That signifies that these breakers are emergency circuit breakers. Of course, with the generator, you can't run all the power to the house. That would just overload the generator. So what we've done is we've identified emergency circuits. So for example, all the circuits that run our two refrigerator freezers and then our standalone freezer, those circuits are labeled as an emergency circuit so that way we don't our foods our perishables don't perish um, and then we have uh, our well because we're not on city water or sewer we're kind of in a rural area so then our well pump is one of the emergency circuits along with the uh, sump pump and our lift station for our sewer so those two are on uh, emergency circuits along with the uh, water heater so this will allow us to be able to use the toilets flush, be able to take hot showers, and then one last circuit is our living room. Uh, we have that as an emergency circuit simply because that will uh, energize the living room circuits and allow us to at least watch TV and uh, will power the router and the Wi-Fi so we'll have access to the outside world and know what's going on as far as the news goes. And then that's it. We have no other circuits uh, that we energize during a power outage when we're running on just generator power. And then once the alarm comes on and we know that the power has been restored, then we go out and we shut the generator off in the shed, and at that point then we can open up the, uh, the main breaker and energize the panel from the power from the power company. So I think I'm at a point where I'm ready to install the meter and energize the panel, but I wanted to test this Reliance uh, power back alarm. So as you can see, I've activated it by turning it on to simulate a power outage. <clears throat> and now we're going to take, put the meter on, leave the camera running, and as soon as I uh, put the meter in, the alarm should go off. It should be in the off position, off, off. Okay, so I plugged the meter back in. We're now hot here. We're energized. Uh, the feeds coming in are live. Uh, we still haven't turned the main breaker on and started energizing the system. I want to first take and put my panel back on, and then we'll go ahead and turn everything back on. So that's it. The Reliance Power Back Alarm worked perfect. Uh, it's definitely something I would invest in. Um, I'll leave a link in the uh, video description below to where you can pick it up. And uh, so let's get the panel back on. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to all the tools and equipment that I used. I hope this video helps you out in your project. And if it did, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you like DIY projects, then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Now get out there and create, build, and inspire. And as always, pay it forward. Thank you for watching. This is Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. We'll see you next week.